you guys could be my nipples now. Right, talking like talking though. nipples on yeah, my chest. Hello. <laughs> hey man, Webby. Hey. It's been a while. I got What's a little the... raw when you went jogging the other day. Oh, you weren't jogging? What the hell are you doing? I wasn't jogging, I'll tell you that. It's it's a a day. There was a lot it's of a like I don't know, there's something. Something happening. I don't know. Is that is you, that your you nipple need to voice? Go over there? <laughs> That's Brendan's nipple voice. Nipple voice. It's the nipple. My nipple oh. voice is like, damn. My name is Nippy Touch Nipple, in nipple. fact. <laughs> Touch me, man. Welcome to another episode of the Law Offices of Quibble, Squabble, and Bicker on this May 11th, 2022. Our client for today is kill, marry, or fornicate with your lunch, or something like that. Yeah, worst that's, title. that's exactly was, what we talked about. Worst title kill Mary had. or pork your pork. Kill fornicate Mary. your pork, I think, is where we were headed, but no one wanted to say Ooh, that. That, that rolls off the tongue. Fornicate your pork. Fornicate your pork. Behold, trapped in a hellscape of their own invention, socially unaware old white men bound by the pretense of being fake lawyers yet knowing no law, no exquisite Latin terminology, they are inexplicably compelled to quibble over minutia, squabble over triflings and bicker like those who value their backyards far too highly without even knowing the difference between an easement and an alleyway. At this very moment, you have entered the heart of the law offices of quibble, squabble, and bicker. Let's get started. Now, we do not have a fake sponsor for today, everybody. But what we do have is finally me realizing that there is stuff that we actually sell. If anybody's interested, go to our website at www.qsblaw.org. That's qsblaw.org. There's a little link on that page that says merch, 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 which means we have merchandise. It's not anything special, really. It's basically our three faces on things. So we have cups and mugs and t-shirts and tapestries and iPhone cases. That's what's currently been made. Don't we have prophylactics now? No, actually, this show is a prophylactic, so it should be the thing that works. Do we have poodle panties yet? No. Yeah, yeah, we do, Greg. That's uh, And we have rubber masks. Are we working on poodle panties? We're doing rubber masks and rubber balls with our faces on it. Poodles. It's just like oh. only... Only fetish wear in our merch store. <laughs> so. they, they, we can we can we can have it where they they have a, a you know a butt plug and it's like one of our faces on the end of it. Yeah, there's a pocket rocket with Greg's face on it. It's designed Ooh. to actually cause people to run from the room. A pocket rocket. Yes. <laughs> I don't even know what this is. This must be a <laughs> West Coast thing I've never heard of. I, I hear know about the dark I side of the moon. In my pocket and the fuse is lit. That's so long. <laughs> also. We do have a Patreon account, everybody. Um, there's one thing associated with it, because I have not really figured out what the hell to do with Patreon, but that's www.patreon.com slash QSBlaw, I believe is the actual link to that. So these, so that's our sponsor for today. It's weird. Yeah. But the law offices of Quibble, Squabble, and Bicker are, Bicker are being brought to you by the law offices of Quibble, Squabble, and Bicker. I'd just like to throw out there for anyone who wants to become a Patreon, at least at the minimum $15 a month level, I think the minimum um, it, is five dollars or three. $3. I'm saying fifteen though. For fifteen, uh-huh. they could just DM me on Twitter and we can work out what they want. You know what I'm saying? I thought you were saying that they could work out with you on Twitter. They can dungeon master with you. <laughs> sure, that'd be great. That'd be the best option, actually. If you're, if you're I thought he was going to do like exercise goal. videos on Twitter because he was going to yeah. work out with them. He said, "No, that's a TikTok thing I'm working on." Oh, that's good. Say. Well. Well, okay. So, should, do you so think it might be a good idea that I do a fake sponsor off the top of my head since I'm really out of my head right now. Um, if you would like to give us a fake sponsor, hey, Greg, right though, now, I'm go ahead. If you should if I you are it? so inclined, just do it. Just do it go, randomly. Go, man. Off your head. This, we will be here wrapped this summer on Netflix, the streaming service that has brought you such great documentaries as cooking with gasoline and my wife my enemy <laughs> comes the most weighted crime drama in years waspy soda pop <laughs> villain or not 
Watch me soda pop. Is the villain or not? All that that was a... no, no. I'm gonna. I want to mark the permanent record that he doesn't get to just hot mic ad lib <laughs> Villain or hero? Villain for, for the future? He's not. Watch me soda pop. Will he save the universe or destroy it? And. So the World uh, Wildlife Federation, the WWF, not the Wrestling League, has declared Waspy Sotopop public enemy number one because of his fast and loose rules of culinary stuff. <laughs> he's is stuff a legal term? <laughs> yes. are, we still, are we actually still talking about this? He has committed, <laughs> he has committed more crimes for his recipes than <laughs> Al-Qaeda and the Black Hands combined. So Waspy Soda Pop will be played by who? Uh, by the Black Matt Hand, Brachi. I think. I believe Matt Bronte would have to play Waspy Soda Pop. <laughs> He's Matt much Brachi. more svelte than I am, and his ears are stick out. More. I know, but you guys have a lot of similarities. Oh, really? Like what? Um, vocal cords. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I have a question. I just noticed that the uh, the sign up there says "Deliver Happiness." Yes. Are we living up to our mission objective? I don't think, I think we're making each other happy that. right now. <laughs> Boys, I don't see a sign. It is. It's above your head and a little to the right. Yep. There's a oh, sign. I'm blocking it. <laughs> You're blocking it with your head? As your well, head gets larger and larger. When I move, I see a plant. <laughs> really? What are you guys talking about? When okay, I move, so guys, I see a plant. <laughs> when I move... <laughs> That's I a t-shirt slogan. If you have <laughs> Netflix, watch Watch Me Soda Pop, Villain or Not. Yeah. We, this we, summer. <laughs> moved on minutes ago. I was lost. And you had, well, you, you we had have, me with, I saw a plant. But he, but when I no, move, I see a I plant. See, I, see a, I see a fern. or a, Yeah. I see a fern. Some That's kind of succulent, a, a succulent behind me. I see is, no it a, is it a cell fern, Greg? I don't think. I don't, I don't think that's a succulent. Is that how Waspy Soda Pop says so folk? So for <laughs> I just know it says deliver happiness. And I don't see that. It's so weird. <clears throat> well, I pointed out, but I don't know if it would do any good. Yeah, I, my it's, finger goes oh, out of the. I do not see it. No, no, no. It's. Yeah. I do have a. Is that uh, bottom half of your screen a gray? It's gray over there. Thing. It's a Bar desk, there? Greg. It's a. We're sitting at a desk. I know, but. I see no sign. Is is Greg periscoping this or something? What is I don't he? Know oh what my he's God! Doing. I, I I can see to the left and right. I can. Well, there it is. <laughs> now I see it. <laughs> it's wow. He's like Sir Richard Burton finding the headwaters of the Nile. Yes, it wasn't in my field of vision when I looked. There was no sign, but then I swiped over and I could see the city outside. It looks you, like yeah. <laughs> looks like New York. He's probably. so excited. Yeah, yeah it's New York look, City. He's like a little kid. He's this so is like happy. that game missed with a Y, where I can discover things by this is how it... very dull, very boringly. <laughs> As then suddenly things. he could see. For Greg, it's not where's Waldo, it's where's Porno. I don't think there's any of that here. Well, he's getting his happiness delivered to him. So Oh, maybe. there's some Oh, that's what it is. Oh right. I... Speaking of which, we do have a client to, to address, which is uh Kill Mary or fuck your lunch. So pork. I thought it was fornicate or pork. It was pork porkinate. Porkinate. Okay. I'm so confused. Aren't you, aren't you glad you picked cooking, Greg? So oh, yeah. We didn't have to come up with the shittiest title ever. I didn't say, hey, let's have the shittiest title so we can talk about <laughs> cooking. I didn't say that. I said, uh huh. Sorry. Yeah, you just said talk about cooking. So it's yeah. like, all right, look, that's a, that's a I put topic. an egg in a pan and Everyone I flipped it cooking. over. And oh, then this is, I ate this it. Is cooking, this, cooking. Most of my this conversations is, are about cooking. What I cooked last night, what I ate, what I made for myself. Me and my friends, it's a thing. Most Everyone, of your conversations are about what you made for, for yourself for dinner last night? Yeah, and, and what the terrible. hell kind of useless conversations are you having, Greg? If you're, I'm a foodie, I guess. You're and not a foodie. Food. You eat out of no, dumpsters. I know. <laughs> and yet I still love talking about like what sandwich I, I never realized night. it. He's a raccoon. 
<laughs> I'm a possum. He's, he's, a, he's a raccoon. That's, no, that's, more of a raccoon. I think he's right about that. Life. <laughs> I'm serious, though. Like, everyone I know talks about cooking. Like, what you have for dinner last night? They'll be like, ooh, I made this thing. I took pasta and I did this. I so it's like it. asking what someone has for dinner is like the new statement of what's the weather like? It's, it's like that's new. It's, it's, it's not new. Forever. It's what? not new. It's not new. It's been around <laughs> forever. Me and my friends have always loved to be like, what'd you make last night? Like, he leaves us a sandwich. I think oh, these are imaginary out. friends. I don't think these are real friends you're talking No, they're not. <laughs> I so love- all you guys talk about, like, seriously, like, hey, Greg. Hey, Steve. Hey, you know what I did? What's that? I cooked spaghetti last night. No shit. Ooh, yeah. okay. What'd you I put boiled in water. You know what? Ninety percent of Americans will say, "What'd you do last night?" Oh, I watched the NFL game. Oh, can you believe that that guy threw a ball and it went to that There's guy's no... hands? And then the guy ran. It's like to me, I don't have sports. Me and my friends like to be like, "What'd you make last night for dinner?" Ooh, tell me what'd you do. Yeah. The the difference is I. And, and probably 99% of everyone I would ever talk to would never be able to do what that guy did. Anyone can make no, spaghetti like Steve did. This is it. This is like, hey, I took a shit. Oh, yeah? I took a you shit. Will. Okay, so we're different people, but some people like to talk about food. My dad was like that. My dad would watch, listen to the radio shows about cooking. He'd love to tell his patients. He was a dentist. I, I and, love cooking. And if somebody wanted to talk to me about cooking, I could geek the shit out. I love cooking. I watch cooking shows. I was just, you were suggesting that this was the first thing out of you and your friend's mouth. And I was like, not the first like thing. Cooking. Oh, okay. I might say like, I, like, I, I. He'll say I hello. And then he'll talk about cooking. Hello. I. <laughs> Man. Let me tell you what I made last night. Yeah. I put this thing in the microwave. But when my friends tell me about some elaborate dinner they made, I'm like all oh, ears. I'm just like, oh, do tell. But that's Ooh, every what? night, though. Do Every tell. night they're telling you about the elaborate dinner they made. Not every night. I don't have that many friends. So The elaborate I mean, breakfast they made. Yeah, you know, breakfast is, yeah, sure. There's sure. great breakfast as you make. I've right. been eating up. Uh, take the Pop-Tart, you, know you stick them in the toaster. And you know, I've been making on. that. I feel like such a fancy pants. I've been making polenta. And then putting an egg on it, very continental style. Oh. And just eating polenta with an egg, a sunny side up egg. Which continent? Yolk. Antarctica? No, uh, Italy. The, the, con- the, are the you, continent are you, of Italy? Are you actually Europe? making the, are you making, pan making the polenta? I swear to God, it's the simplest thing to make, but it's like, it feels so fancy. It's like polenta with a, yeah, and then you break the yolk, let the yolk soak into the polenta. It's amazing. Well, anybody knows how to break a yolk, Greg, but how do you make a polenta? Polenta, I have this mix that you add water and you heat it up like Oh, cream so you're of not wheat. making it from okay. scratch. Then. It's like cream of wheat. It's like cream Yeah, of no, no, no. Yeah, you, can, you can do it that way. They also, you can buy it in these tubes. Oh, yeah. I've, I've done that too. Yeah. Yeah. So there's that. And I was just, but I was under the impression you were a foodie. He was and were fancy. Right. And making the plan. I was like, no, this is way cheaper, though. It's cheaper to buy the bag of flour. It's like flour. You can buy a big bag. Well, yeah. You know, a box of wine is cheaper water. than a, you know, 1965 bottle of whatever, whatever. But sure. I mean, guys, give me some credit as far as no. I know I was joking about being a foodie. But most people for breakfast have cornflakes or a granola bar. I fucking made polenta with a That's beautiful nice. sunny side of bag on it. But you don't actually make polenta. I make it. I mean, I don't mill the corn. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Matt. I'm not a fucking I, farmer next to a mill. I, I'm going to get a t-shirt. But Wait, it's just that t-shirt. you're presenting making the polenta as like some gourmet thing when really all it is is like you're pouring it into a bowl. Well, I have to cook it. I mean, it's just like just the fact And that heating I, it up like anybody can do with oatmeal, an Greg, and put an egg I on it. That, but, polenta. But, to, but no, no, to Greg's point, he could have made oatmeal. Or yeah, fucking top ramen, but yeah. he didn't. He did the instant polenta. So I mean, you know. So he <laughs> that, used that's... something that's not as commonly used, but just yeah, as easily yeah. made. But yeah, maybe yeah, even it's... easier made. But you know, it's progress. It's I don't progress. know that it's pro. As long as he didn't get it out of a trash can, it's progress. No, but I doctored the polenta. I put cheddar cheese in it, melted in. Uh, I put all these I mean, you know... things in it, spices in it. I put garlic powder. Yeah. It's yeah. for me that's So your spices it's, is just garlic powder? Um garlic powder, p- black pepper, uh-huh. some salt. Some salt. So salt and pepper, basic seasoning. Yeah, but most people are, aren't eating that for breakfast. Most people are eating a fucking granola bar and say right out the door. 
I don't know how you can speak for most people, Greg. You don't know. Most I know people. most people. I don't know they see juice now, like they do juice or they drink dirt or something. That's kind of what I've seen. <laughs> they drink dirt. Bone yeah, marrow. No, there's some some. I actually deep. ate bone marrow last night. I went to a, a tapas restaurant and fancy. Um, yeah, I was taking my mother out for a belated Mother's Day because she wasn't feeling well on Mother's Day. So I took her out to a little restaurant around here called De Fuego. And we had tapas, and uh, it was kind of like a family-style thing where we had, like, some rainbow trout and shrimp ceviche, and um, it was very nice. Wow. So, so tapas, Yeah, and they had polenta the in a tube that you could just eat out of the tube. Okay, so we got they two foods polenta, here. Mate. We got polenta in a tube. We got uh, some, what, what did you say, some uh, rainbow trout? Rainbow trout. Yeah. We need a Which third food. Trout. That's gay. gay I'm going to throw out the third food is... Uh, 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 liverwurst sandwich. Uh huh. So now, I, oh right, it. there's a game we're playing. That's right. So now we're you have playing to the game, if, listeners. Which one you would do what to? Would you, you pork this? Would you kill that and marry? You have to choose between the three. The rainbow okay, trout I would was marry good. liverwurst sandwiches because I, I, I've had a lifelong relationship with liverwurst. Okay, and I want to continue liverwurst. it. I want to grow old with liverwurst. And, uh, <laughs> you know, like, I could marry liverwurst. Yeah, I love liverwurst. Love Braunschweiger. 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 Hey, Braunschweiger. Comes in that tube. Yes. Another tube. Greg eats out of tubes. He's actually an astronaut. <laughs> so Greg is the man one? who fell to Earth. So we got to marry. Who, who are the you going uh, to fornicate with? <laughs> are you going to fornicate so with wait. trout? Trout or, or polenta? I bet polenta would be better on your dick, feel nicer. Just mushy. Because like I told you guys. I there were no pizza. bones in the trout, just so you know. But remember I told you I fucked a pizza dough when I was like, working at a grocery store when I was 18? And that felt, so it seems like a similar thing, like nice mushy. Yeah, mushy. I think, yeah that's a good, good story. So then then on the. So the, then you kill the rainbow trout. You're, you're killing the rainbow trout by default yeah. at this point. But, yeah, uh, but technically the, the trout is dead already. Well, you're killing it and again. It has been killed. Yeah, fish have yeah. no feelings. So it's killed, it's being killed again. It. You don't I'm know calling fish it from the no future. Feelings. Don't you know? Don't doubt what I'm talking about. You look kind of like uh, the early day uh, Ant Man. <laughs> the early day Ant Man. <laughs> Hello, calling all cars from the 1960s or something. <laughs> it looks like Spice Basher. Who? Who? Spice Basher. What is Spice Smasher? He's a 40s uh, <laughs> Sabaro. <laughs> he smashed spies. Did you say he's a 40s Sabaro? Did they oh, even you, have those restaurants back then? I thought you said Spice. I'm like, literally, this guy's like coming in. Hello, give me those peppercorns. <laughs> I'm, well, <laughs> I'm Spice Smasher. <laughs> well, he came out after the Spice Girls, and he didn't like them. So yeah, and then he had the Spice Girls. The spice Girls. <laughs> I'm the spice oh, I get it. You had me going there for a second. All right, so Brendan, so what's your choice on those three foods? Uh, wow, Greg, you made some, some great choices. Um, I think I'm going to fornicate with the uh, with the fish. It was uh, wrapped in a banana peel, so that kind of makes sense. Yeah, nice. And I think I think I'm going to. Uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and kill the liverwurst. Yeah. And marry the polenta. Oh, okay. Well, I'm going to kill the polenta. I'm going to oh. marry the fish oh. and then have sex with the liverwurst because it's kind of the right consistency. It's also, you know, both both of you kind of went that direction and I, I get it. I, and, you know, and when I, I do have liverwurst, I generally have mayonnaise on the sandwich that I make it. So it kind of makes sense, like, uh, visually, too. No mustard, but red onion. I can do both. Mustard. It, it doesn't mustard just... Yeah, I'll do mustard, I'll do onions, yeah, I'll do lettuce, I'll do cheese, whatever I feel in the mood okay. for. But cheese. I would say, I'm going to go with Matt here, um, de facto um, liverwurst sandwich is mayonnaise. Like, you got you got to have that almost. It's like a standard, oh. like peanut butter and jelly. Yeah. What are you talking about? Well, you put peanut, and, peanut butter and jelly on liverwurst too? Uh, no, but, no, but I had peanut butter and bologna, which is kind of similar. I see bologna. peanut butter and ham sandwiches for one summer. I don't know if I was going through um, childhood menopause or something, but I uh, 
it's probably. Like when I was child of menopause. Yeah, when whole summer. <laughs> Or that one summer when you were what 11. What does that even mean? <laughs> I don't know. Childhood Were you having Uncle hot Steve. flashes as a kid? I guess. When I was 12, for some reason, the whole summer, I loved peanut butter and ham sandwiches. And then I never ate them again. Never wanted to. But I loved them. So I don't know what I was going through. Like, um, I was pregnant, maybe? Did your did your nipples hurt a little bit you, at the time? Did you have they menopause? Or were you pregnant, Greg? There's, like, a difference between know. the two. I mean, I'm, it was like Arnold Schwarzenegger in a junior. It's like Arnold, who? Arnold Braunschweiger. Who Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's Arnold Braunschweiger. Braunschweiger. <laughs> Arnold Braunschweiger. He was I the governor say, of Rhode Island. Braunschweiger, you got to marry, though, because you want to spend the rest of your life with Braunschweiger. No, I, I, have to, I do liverwurst Braunschweiger sporadically through the year. So it's not something I necessarily have to have a long relationship with it's like you know why it's uh, sustainable though it's cheap as fuck you get a big thing for three bucks rainbow trout you you can't afford that bitch if that's your wife you know well, that's, like, sorry that's you're, why you're you like do what i did trout. you just do the dirty and move on there's no keeping that around uh, yeah but if you marry the rainbow trout I'm i was sorry, just looking at like trout. how it would make you feel you know over time so i think that the trout has more longevity in terms of uh being happy to have it more often a dead trout yeah i, yes. I just couldn't afford it that's too fancy that's like marriage. we're not so looking we're not starting this wasn't this just wasn't pretend a, like money a, is not a factor greg we're not, we're not we're not doing the you know economic hunger games this was, <laughs> what would you do with this dumb food i would chew my bow and arrow it all and comes down to trout. what is greg willing to drag out of the trash to eat that's really what it comes down to that's, that's really what he'll eat because that's what i'll be ending up eating when I kicked out of this apartment, which is any, any year now. Okay. Well, I mean, at some time we all must go. So I want to ask you guys, what was the first time you cooked something? I mean, it could have been when you were a kid. Some kids are pretty prodigious when they're kids. But what was the first thing you ever said, wow, I cooked something amazing? This is my thing. I don't think I ever cook. cooked anything amazing until like I was divorced. Yeah. Was it to woo other women in? Did you learn how to cook? Because you were like, oh, I could. No, I think what what is actually after I think I got married the second time and I had a whole bunch of kids living with us. And so I started getting creative with cookbooks and uh, going, what can I make for everybody for family dinner that could be nice? You know, like microwavable that. meatloaf. No, no, didn't do microwavable meatloaf. Uh, making an actual meatloaf, video. though. But an actual video. meatloaf. Oh, that. Oh, right. I forgot about that. Right. Oh, that was link. later. That was later, put the Greg. Link today, will you put the link later? Link later? Like art link later? Art link That's later. Link secret cook. No, put the link because Matt has. You a want the link too. to the uh, American Fine Dining episode? I yes. Guess, of uh, a making... microwave meatloaf, which was. Ugh. It was horrible. It looked Sounds terrible. terrible. <laughs> but Greg would have eaten it. I probably would have, yeah. He would have. That's true. Hey, we've got 23 person. likes on TikTok already. They're liking us now. They, they are. Like, not not bad like today because we're not we're not talking racist stuff today. So that's I good. told you, people like food. And you know, black people like... People like food, Greg. Food. That's an easy thing to say because people have to live. Yes. But you know what I really like, like is about air. Food. Air is like food. super cool to me. You guys, after sex, food is the best pleasure in the world. Like every day you get this amazing, pleasurable thing. And I think people take it for granted sometimes. They're like, "Damn, food! What am I going to eat?" I think I think you need to stop getting the plinth in the tube, and you might that 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 scale of sex to food might change. I eat other things. I eat some damn good shit. But I'm saying, food wait, is. Wait. A so you like, eat some damn good shit. So what are you talking about? Food is an about? easy pleasure. The food is like it's always there. What are you There's talking about, right. Greg? Even if you're not rich like me, I can go get a like on sale at Safeway an amazing frozen pizza from DiGiorno and be like, this is fucking amazing. This is so pleasurable. I love this. I can't believe I'm like on the poverty level and I can experience this amount of pleasure. I just have to say that with this new little thing I did with Zoom, you, you guys could be my nipples now. He needs we to move start. more. Over You're like talking, like talking, like talking nipples on yeah, my chest. Hello, <laughs> hey man, Webby. Hey, it's been a while. 
I got What's a little raw when you went <laughs> jogging the other day. Oh, you weren't jogging? What the hell are you doing? It wasn't jogging, I'll tell you that. It's it's a a game. There was a lot it's of, a like, I don't know, there's something. Something happening, I don't know. Is that, is you, that your you nipple need to voice? Go over there. <laughs> That's Brendan's nipple voice. Nipple voice. It's nipple. My nipple voice oh. is like, damn. My man. name's Nippy Touch Nipple, in nipple. fact. <laughs> Touch me, man. That's uh, my nipple voice. You crack me up. <clears throat> All right, let's get you guys off my chest. So, uh, onto a wall. Off the chest, onto a wall. Uh, I think I like this one most of all. Greg isn't a fan of this because it's so stark and, and uh, yeah. hermetic, I think. That's the right Yeah, word. this is this is this is truly kind of I'm much much more of a minimalist stark. Ah. That makes sense. So we have to come up with three new foods for us to address. Um, oh um let me think here. So I guess each of us pick one thing and that'll be it. So uh Well I'm you don't gonna... have to. We could just talk about cooking. Like I want it. <laughs> Yeah, but you didn't discuss it with us, Greg. So it doesn't matter. Said, what, you what would want. you like to talk? What 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 aspect of cooking would you like to talk about? Right. That was I a question like I cooking? asked that he never answered. Do you guys like cooking? Nobody I love asked cooking. me anything. Nobody asked me huh? shit. I did. Look at your text, you dickhead. No, I was at work. I couldn't see shit. My my job doesn't pay me to look at my phone like a fucking millennial and be like, <laughs> "Hey, who's texting me?" I'm going to check my Facebook while I'm washing dishes. Yeah, but you get off work at like 3. You could have looked at it after that. Yeah, but then we have our drink. So your lie has been exposed. A lie? Yes, it is. No, because that... You you weren't working, so you could check your phone. I'm talking to my friends. I just thought cooking would have been pretty self-explanatory. When you are a superhero, <laughs> your superhero name will be Excuse Man. It's not an excuse. Your power it's is the reason why not. There's a difference between excuse and a reason. Uh-huh. So, What's Greg, the difference, Greg? I had a very good reason not to no. look at my phone. No, you didn't. What what what's your favorite uh, type of cuisine to cook? Are you a steak and taters guy? You're a he's a meat in the tube guy. Asian fusion person, or <laughs> you know Tex Mex? What's your? Do you like the tacos? It's very what's simple. Microwave well, pizza. My my whole life, what I've cooked for myself is rice, chicken and vegetables, shit like that. Like you make a stew. Oh, I a make stew. some rice. A I, stew. I I take some whatever meat I have in the freezer, usually chicken, because yeah. it's cheap, oh. okay. and vegetables. And then I put all these spices in it. And sometimes it's better than anything I eat in a restaurant. I'm not a good cook. I need to interrupt for a second. There's like uh, 18 people on TikTok right now. Just letting you guys know if you want to see both sides of this conversation, go to the uh, law offices of Quibble, Squabble, and Bicker on YouTube, and you'll get to see us arguing with each other. One person looks like a us. bug. What's the, what was that, Greg? They can't even hear us. They can hear me, but if they go to YouTube, they can oh, hear all three. If they go to YouTube, it's, it's the same thing. Because it's so. live streaming on YouTube as well as live streaming on TikTok. Right yeah, now. yeah, I right. get it. But it there were like, 18, we're, really now we're the down full to 10. YouTube experience. We were down, we're down to 10 now. So we were at 18. <laughs> I'm a, I'm they a all, that's because they left TikTok and went to YouTube. Maybe. Maybe they did. Yeah. Or they just left because that's what usually, usually we wind up down at one. Yeah, yep, we're down to three now. <laughs> Well, 18 to go. 3, like that. TikTok like, like that. is a fickle bitch. Well, um, we got North Dakota. <clears throat> At least we got a North Dakota correspondent. Well, let's just see if anybody's commenting on... Holy crap, there is a, there's like uh, comments on YouTube. So, from Happy Hour News Team, Great Goggles from Sanchez El Dorado, I vote villain. Also, he says, I wait all week for this, never disappoints. And then four tongue out of the face emojis from the Happy Hour News Team on YouTube. So... Uh, Yay! They're being active. Thanks, there. guys. They wait all week for this. I think because this week we're we kind of went out of the gate arguing with each other, like just right, yeah, right like at the, the beginning days. of the show. We're just That's like what we do the best, <laughs> just doing the whole squabbling. All right, so sorry I interrupted before, Greg. Please do finish your thought. Where's Scott? It's your thought oh. is gone. No, the- I, I'm saying I'm not a good cook, but. I know how to make food that I like. I know how to put how much salt I want in it. So I make these very simple dishes. Like I'll make pasta with a shitty bolognese because I can't afford like Italian sausage and shit. So you make bolognese? 
Uh, it's better than most Italian restaurants, but from scratch, you make bolognese from scratch. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'll take um, shitty pasta sauce from Safeway that's on sale. Oh, then I'll add hamburger meat and pork. Hopefully, if I can afford pork that week, because the then pork is cheaper than ground beef, Greg. No, not necessarily. Not always. Most of the time, it is. Sometimes I get some like chubs of ground beef that are like really cheap. You get wait chubs. Chubs. Of, That's what of, I call it. A chub. <laughs> that thing. The tube. That's yeah, not tubes. what I ever knew that a chub was called. The tube. They call it a chub. Now we Let's know what's going to happen to the ground beef if we talk about you that. You never bought a. You never bought a pork chub. A chub. A chub? chub. Is that they like a that unit a of pork measurement? Chub. Like two three beef. chubs is a, equal to a dong, <laughs> and five dongs is a. I swear to God, is a term in the butchery. In butchery. In, in butchery, right. they call in a, butchery. They call a ground beef chub. a chub. You've never ever heard of a pork chub, but 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 it's no, got a unit of something. It's a unit of chub. Greg's mind. It's it's a it's a it's, a, it's an adjective in like a sentence. It's chub. modifying the hamburger. It's a chub, you know, of hamburger. So what is a chub? Is it weight, mass? A chub is like actually i've never seen a hamburger it's pork chub which is what's, like the, what's the girth of a chub greg you mean it's a like chop? a donkey dick like pork chop you see, it's like a donkey dick of pork and sometimes it's marinated it's like pork chub marinated with what, what's the unit of measurement <laughs> how many chubs um, in a donkey dick? i think it's the shape it's like okay it's a big thing of pork with like this so it's like a big donkey dick. chub i've i've actually seen the member of a donkey <laughs> i mean is, is one chub equal to one donkey I th- imagine I've never seen a donkey dick myself, but oh, it's not a, it's not a small thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have a good. It's bigger than you and me. Let me just put it that way. That's not saying much, but you know. with our whole bodies, no, no, it's no, gigantic. No, no. That's that's yeah, a yeah, that's yeah, definitely that's a, got some girth. That's like at God. least thirty chubs right there. <laughs> How many chubs is that? The hamburger chub is, is it, like is it like the, is it like the metric system where there's a you know and then uh, they're all based on base units of animal. Yeah. And at any point, are these uh, burger chubs circumcised? They they are. Once I cut open the take the skin off. Wait, wait a minute. So it's like the, the it's like the, it's like I, the I, English I, foot. Like was yeah, based like on the king's That's foot. actually Greg's name for his penis. Whenever I buy it, I'm just the English, the English the English foot. The English I, foot. I, I basically have to put on my uh, rabbi outfit and I boil it every time I. <laughs> slowly cut the sheep off, which is like the foreskin. Mm-hmm. And then I go, <laughs> that's my rabbi song. <laughs> I've heard it before. It's great. And you can well, tell uh, everybody. I think that was on the charts. Song. It called it the rabbi song by Elton John. Yes, <laughs> it was like his remake of his own song. It may be quite simple, but, but now, now that the tip's gone, <laughs> now, the... now I've got a dong, a big donkey dong. <laughs> oh, pork chub, where are you? Uh, I gotta get to the bottom of pork chub. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe I may, I did not make this up, guys. There's a thing called a pork chub. Sanchez Alderado is on your side on this, Greg. He says it's a real term. Yes. And happy well, are, and, and Shanty weeks. says my chub has some girth. Yeah, so, that's, that's probably because he's been looking at you like intently, Greg. It might be two bees on the chub when it comes to butchery. <laughs> it comes to butchery. 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 Chub. If you're a butcher, you know, you live in that world of butchery, butchery world. <laughs> butchery world. Right. <laughs> All right. So back to marry, kill, or, you know, do things, Fornicate. nasty things with. Well, obviously you'd want to pork. So pork. I'm going to go with. Uh, what are the foods we're doing, bean. Greg? I'm going with green bean salad with the, like. Uh, crunchy onion things on top that your aunt Ooh. always bought for Thanksgiving. That's, I like that. That's my so like um, green bean salad with almonds. So it's not like it's more like a casserole than a green. Yeah, bean. it's a casserole yeah. salad. I Got mean, it. basically okay. everything Greg was talking about in terms of his cooking was all just ver- versions yeah. of different casseroles. What what okay. a cream of mushroom soup on it, right? Yep. And yeah, and, and, and and in the Midwest, like there's soda and there's pop. In the Midwest, that's called a hot dish. Oh, a hot dish. They the don't call dish. it a casserole. No, I went up and I'm like, they're like, the look, dish. I made hot dish, and I'm like, that's a casserole. 
<laughs> that's a hot dish. Those are green beans. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Those are little right. those little cocktail weenies. Oh, so so right. your so your choice is green bean green bean casserole with almonds and cream mushrooms. What was your? That's Greg? what I'm. That's what I'm throwing into the ring. Okay. For, for wait, I'm sorry. For what to marry, fuck or kill? Well, yeah, no, we just... have to get three choices first, Greg. So oh, what's, oh, so oh. what's the one you're? What's the food you're throwing into the mix? Should I just go? Uh, Greg Pettix's shitty bolognese, a fake bolognese. So your bolognese and pasta, and which is what, ki- what kind Italian of pasta? Restaurant. What kind of pasta? Eh, rotelli would be awesome, but I can't afford rotelli. You should have spaghetti. You can get rotelli at like a dollar a box, Greg. I don't know what. And you're it was spaghetti about. is more weight per ounce. Okay, so now you're going based upon like well, what you can afford. To another again. episode of How Poor Is Greg? <laughs> That's Damn, how I buy <laughs> the relative weight of different pastas. I all literally which buy less food that way. Do you get a food. chub of rotelli? I get a chub just listening to him talk about the price of pasta. I buy. That's how I buy food. I go like, how much pennies per ounce? How much? When I, when I buy a refrigerator, I think about these things. I, I don't know the last time I actually exercised brain power on a box of pasta. I swear to God, though, my bolognese, even though it's like so, like uh, right, tenno, it's better than a restaurant. We've heard this is, about eight most, times already. Most Italian restaurants I can't even go to. It's like tell us how great you are, Greg. You for, no, I'm not great. That's how sad Italian restaurants are. It's like, hey, you forgot to put garlic in this fucking bolognese, shithead. You fucking non paisan. I mean, you only run into a lot of Italian. Italians not knowing to use garlic. Like, are they no? Because I think Italian restaurants know they have to like appeal to like your average white bread Americans. It's like, oh. If we put too much garlic in, people would be like, Ugh. Are you just talking about that Italian restaurant that's around the corner from your house? Is that the one you're talking from where no, you live? Everyone. I've been to the best ones in town. Everyone says, Greg, you move to this city. This is the best Italian restaurant in town. It's awesome. And I'll, I'll go and I'll be like, fuck. Well, can we pathetic. can we talk about just for a second that the best Italian restaurant in town is really not that accomplished, really not accomplishing much more than the best Mexican restaurant in town. I mean, it's not like it's complicated food to make. Yeah. Noodles, I can't make sauce. great Mexican food though. I can't make amazing certain Mexican restaurants. What they do is sorcery. You know, obviously, in any given place, there's going to be awesome stuff. I'm just saying that uh, now that we're back in you know college or high school, or whatever. <laughs> I'm just saying that with Are we at the UN. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. No, I lost track. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> Sorry, Sorry, I distracted um, you with our new. You're saying surroundings. the best food Mexican is. Oh, I'm just saying that that it, that that you're if you took twenty different enchiladas and twenty different bowls of spaghetti and sauce, you'd be hard pressed to really tell the difference. I think your average palate would it be hard pressed to tell the difference between the best and the worst of those. I've never had a decent bowl of pasta in a restaurant. Or- Never. Better than I could make with my shitty culinary skills. I've had enchiladas that blew my mind. I was like, oh, that's so good. I could never make that. This feels like he's giving us a challenge, Brendan. Like when you're finally in town, he's going to make pasta for us, for us to test to see if his particular skills are as, as great as he says that they are. I, I, think think just, I, think, I think we just need to invest in a GoPro. You know, it'll be a pre recorded segment, maybe over a couple of episodes, and we'll do that. We'll, we'll, we'll try his. The world's most amazing, uh, That's better than uh, the best Italian restaurants. Yeah, somehow is made right in Greg's a, apartment, right by his uh, tube of polenta. Yeah, somehow Greg like right buys now, off the bat right. how simple it is. Is a, a good bolognese if you're really like Italian. My dad was Sicilian. It should be like the consistency of chili. You could eat it in a bowl with a fork. The piece of Italian bread. Right. So, so basically, so, it's right off the bat, I win. And adding right more the sauce. Bat, my bolognese is better than most Italian restaurants because usually it's just like a red sauce <laughs> with a few chunks of meat in it. Uh-huh. Like, a, like right. a shitty progresso soup can or whatever. It's, they don't get it. Nobody they don't. Because it costs money. It costs money to put lots of. <laughs> really? How much money, Greg? Uh, I don't know because I don't have that much money. But. <laughs> But if I was a but somehow, somehow he beats all the people with the he, money. He can buy his... cream sherry, but he can't buy meat. No, I can. That's why my bolognese is better than a restaurant, which is, I'm amazed. 
Then so really what you're just saying is they don't give you enough meat to the sauce. That's what it sounds like to me. And, and, and seasonings. They don't have garlic in it. Usually it's just like, hey, there's no flavor. I'm pretty sure there's garlic in there. No, okay, no, the Italian enough. restaurants aren't allowed to use garlic. I, don't I think, think, that, the, I think that the staff bathed in it. At they don't use enough. <laughs> they use enough. Okay, okay, Greg. So yeah. so here's, here's your choices then. So this is uh, marry, kill, or screw oregano, uh -huh. basil, or bolognese. <laughs> Which one's it going to be, Greg? Well, those are like two very similar things, and then something totally off the. So, okay. What so were the choices? I, oregano. Yes, basil. Oregano, I want to kill. Basil. I, I don't or, even like oregano. I would marry. Or his basil, his bolognese. I love basil. I mean, and he's been having sex with it the whole time he's been talking about it. And then if it's a good bolognese, like my dad used to make, definitely that's fuck because it was yeah. meaty and it was very. It had a high like chub a content. Her, it was like a woman on her period. It was yeah. chubby. That's what we used to call it. You're like, this spaghetti's just chubby. <laughs> there's so much with two B's. Here. There's a full chub. Of well, let's say it's spelled this. chubby, Greg, is with two B's. <laughs> and it Otherwise, it's oh, chubby. Chub, a chub, chub is, is basically a donkey dick. A, a chub with two B's is somebody's last name. Mr. Well, Chubb. The Chubb Life Insurance Group. Because <laughs> Mr. that's how I saw Vietnam on PBS in the 80s, because the Chubb. <laughs> what the hell are you talking about now? You saw Chubb Vietnam because of Chubb, the insurance salesman? All the, yeah, all the best P, uh, PBS <laughs> shows about in New York were like brought to you by Chubb Life Insurance with two Bs. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to marry us or fuck us or kill us? <laughs> that was the question that PBS always asked. Yes. Would you like to donate or have sex with us? Yeah. Which your yeah. choice or kill? The, but the, I'm sorry, the pork chub I think is full of two B's. When you say pork chub, as opposed to hey, he's a chub, uh -huh. a little chub walking down the street, like I eat me. Wait, that's actually the theme to the monkeys, isn't it? Here we come. Chubbing down the street. <laughs> Walking down the street. Rubbing my chub on hey, hey, every one of these. Hey, hey, we're the chubbies. <laughs> that would be, that's our next sponsor. sponsor. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> the chubbies. Oh, yeah. Oh, by okay. the way, everybody who's listening, don't forget on July, July, it's going to be June, June. June fifteenth will be the second annual Step Up to the Bar Association and uh, banquet uh, 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 party award show where we give away quibblies to people. So that will be live here on YouTube on June fifteenth at five p.m. Pacific time. Why has Greg disappeared? Red, gray. Now Brendan is gone. All right. Well, then I'm just going to go back to the the normal view. Here we go. I was back. I was. Be, I, if I leaned to the one side, I just disappeared. Well, this is actually a good time because um, I think we've got a new segment from Waspy Soda Pop. Really, who, uh, he's back. Who's had had COVID. He's good. So why don't I get that started? And uh, glad to hear. So he's good. Yeah, I think so. But you know, maybe I'm wrong. But oh, uh, no. we'll. <laughs> We'll see. At Safe Mart, it's a Safe Mart. Come to Safe Mart and be safe. Safe Mart is a proud sponsor of Food is for Eating with Waspy Soda Pop. Today's special, Buzzard Guts for nine cents on the dollar. Come get some. Food is for eating. Food is for eating. Food is for eating with Waspy Soda Pop. Hi there, everybody. I'm Wheezy's Seltzer Bottle, and my grandson Waspy Soda Pop is still under the weather from the COVID, the China virus. And so he asked me to give you all his favorite recipe that I made for him when he's not feeling well. This is just simple. You can do this with your family. This is some basic little is chicken fingers. First, you want to get 16 skin chicken feet. You want to cut them into one inch strips. You get one beaten egg, one cup of buttermilk, one and a half teaspoons of garlic powder, cup of all purpose flour, one cup of seasoned breadcrumbs, one teaspoon of salt, 
One teaspoon of baking cat. I don't know what, what I said. I think it's one teaspoon of baking powder, one quarter oil for frying. Then you want to place the chicken feet into a large resealable plastic bag in a small bowl. Mix the egg, butter, milk, and garlic powder. Pour the mixture into the bag with the chicken feet. You seal it in your refrigerator for two to four hours. Another large bag. You mix together the flour and breadcrumbs, the salt, and the bacon powder. Remove your chicken feet from the refrigerator and drain. You discard the buttermilk mixture. You place the chicken feet in the flour mixture bag. You seal it. You shake it because you want to coat it because you want to get all of the crevices of the chicken feet. Oh, good. You heat the oil in a large, heavy skillet to 375 degrees Fahrenheit because we don't really know how to do the other thing. You carefully praise I'm having trouble talking today. You get careful. You want to. You want. You want carefully place the coated chicken in the hot oil. Do not put your hand in it because you will have to go to the hospital for burns, and that's not fun. It's a lot of money. Fry the chicken fingers till golden brown and the juices run clear. You drain on paper towels. Now I got to tell you something. Don't eat the nails and the bones on the chicken feet unless you really want to and you like that crunchy texture clicking around in your mouth. But uh, yeah, these are chicken fingers, but they're really chicken toes. Anyway, I'm Wheezy Seltzer Bottle. Waspy Soda Pop's still down with the China virus and I think he's gonna be okay, but we're gonna see. Anyway, this is Wheezy Seltzer Bottle. Goodbye. Is he on opioids? Wheezy <laughs> He's, Seltzer Bottle? He sounds so sad. And, and, or just, he sounds very sad. He did. It was just like I was depressed listening to it. It was very quiet. I didn't want to interrupt, interrupt but uh, it was definitely quieter. Oh, yeah. I didn't have the original we were on, on the screen. So, well, I took that opportunity because you disappeared on us. So, oh, don't blame me for his quietness. Well, no, I'm saying you disappeared on us, so that's why I took that opportunity to to run the clip. But no, so. that's the thing. If I knew there was, was sorry, Whis, Wheezy was back. I oh, would have wa waited. Not, Waspy apparently has a case of the China virus. Wheezy's yeah, back. The, yeah, the China virus has had him so for so long. I haven't had my break in the middle of the show. Oh. So I've just been running away. But if I knew he was running back, away, well, you yeah. should at least say something so we know that's where you're going. So I don't we could like the, the, the listeners won't even know. Yeah, I know, I but we that. know because we're expecting you to like respond to something. You'll see my blackout screen. Why can't you just say, Hey, I'm gonna go use the bathroom and we'll like go, okay? Then we would know that was <laughs> happening instead of maybe you're having problems with your connection. I was worried about you, man. Yeah. Yes, very worried. But I don't want your attention. You guys why don't we move on to our next segment and then we'll get back into our regularly scheduled program. So um this is uh this is something that everyone waits for every week. Here we go. He has an opinion, may not always be right. He's a real fake lawyer. He's old and he's white. Ask him a question, cause he's a good egg for bogus advice. Ask Greg. Ask Greg. Ask Greg. All right. So on this episode of, or this edition, or this something of Ask Greg, Brendan, do you have a legal question that somebody has written you to ask Greg? And uh, if anybody's on YouTube and has a legal question for Greg, please do it now. Looking at being a steampunk. YouTube, though, uh, Sanchez says Waspy is a villain for sure. And then he said he looked just like Walter Houston. He did. He looked exactly like Walter. He did look like Walters. <laughs> and he sounds like you a little. Wheezy, Wheezy, uh, what was his name? Seltzer Wheezy Bottle. Seltzer Bottle. We had Seltzer, Seltzer two weeks in a row. Chocolate is a different name, though. Is he related to? He's the Washington? maternal grandfather of uh, Oh, so he's a different name. Different last name, yeah, exactly. Oh, different last name. Okay, so I have here, uh, uh, Dear Greg, um, I've been watching with 
uh, a lot of interest the uh, Johnny Depp and Amber Heard uh, trial. And I was curious to know, since they were married at the time that Miss Heard shit, uh, or I should say pooped, on uh, Mr. Depp's bed, is that not a common law child of the two of them and should have been uh, taken care of as opposed to dumped in the garbage uh, by the maid? Sincerely, Julie. So this also brings up some current shit we talked about last week about abortion. And, and like, when is a life a life? When is um, a turd a turd? Yeah, I don't know if we got that deep into when a life was a life, Greg. Well, I mean, that's the issue of abortion. That's basically the crux of the debate. Okay. Is when, and, you know, you could say a poop has still got, like, living organisms in it. Well, some people Parasites. could say that this podcast is an abortion. Yeah. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's a horror show. It's an abortion. He said, abortion. I don't even abortion. understand it. That guy with the goggles. There is a so message from TikTok for you, Greg, which is that Jesus loves you and he gave his life so you can live and live life more abundantly. God bless. So, Duh. Okay. I know that. Someone from TikTok had did. a message for you. Of course. I'm here because of Jesus loving me. Mm -hmm. That's a given. Who doesn't know that? Thanks for nothing, TikTok. I didn't know it. You're... But, um, so yeah, it's, um, that's so they disposed of the poop. You're saying I didn't even know what this poor, to be honest. But as a yeah, lawyer, I, 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 apparently the poop was uh, scooped up by the uh, the you know one of Mr. Depp's uh, house staff, and they was a professional pooper scooper. They just tuck, tossed it in the garbage without even a thought that without even was, a DNA test that this was possibly yeah. the love child of Amber and Johnny. Their whole relationship oh, yeah. was truly just a big piece of shit so because the poop does have living it's still living there's living organisms in it parasites so i mean it's kind of murder they killed that poop baby that little brown baby it's like an uncle and, remus story <laughs> guitar baby and then they, they killed the poop baby the fecal baby <laughs> we so called him fecal around town but I think what she tried to basically, she did something noble. She said, hey, here's our baby. You know, she didn't do anything wrong, but whoever disposed of it, that's where the murder happened. Oh, the disposal person was the Yes. Uh, yeah. right. The, the, all right. All right. Good. good well, I will, I will let Julie know. Thank you uh, so much for your legal advice. Uh, yes, Greg, Greg is uh, amazing at his uh, legal acumen. Should we keep sure. doing this segment? Oh, yes. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> This is one of the best things we do, Greg. <laughs> Have our ratings got through the roof since? You know, occasionally we spike. I don't know why we do, but occasionally it happens. We get like a, a bunch of listens in a particular week over like five times as much as we normally have. Don't know why it happens. It just occasionally happens. Can't explain as long, it. As long as the, uh, the overall average, you know, is escalating. I mean, that was one of the things I learned about the whole industry is that they're counting all the listens, the listens from four, 15, you know, months ago to yesterday to, you know, it's accumulative anyway. So as long as we stick with it. Yeah. Yeah. That's part of it. You're just out there enough that somebody's going to, you know, like a serial killer, they're just going to stumble across you and then, you know, that's it. You're, you're dead. You know, we should like maybe in coming weeks discuss how there's a lot of serial killers. You're probably not happy because bodies are starting to emerge in different lakes and different parts of the country. And uh, it's it's quite fascinating as the waters are like receding because of climate change. Wait. Bodies are now reappear are, are appearing now in different well, places. It's going to be a new golden age of serial killers. You know, be like, uh, wait a second, I thought that it was hasn't been like the seventies or the eight, you know, early eighties that you know, it's been as as good as it's going to be. Right. You know, Too I read this thing phones. once. I read this thing once. It was from the point of view. It was like a comic book from the point of view of a serial killer. Really well written and. It said this thing that was so terrifying to me was like all the famous serial killers you know, those are the failures. There's guys out there who spent like 40 years, their whole lives, just killing, killing, killing. Their numbers are probably like 300 deaths. We don't know about those people because they haven't been caught. Well, you we know, know I, I do have another question for you, Greg, another legal question. Okay. So 
if you're a serial killer, but you only kill members of boy bands, is it really a crime? Ooh, unfortunately, it is. There's nothing on the books that say because boy bands aren't doing anything. Uh, it's not but self-defense. it could be considered a public service. Mercy True, or self defense from you're going mad from hearing the shitty music. So it's like, I have to kill them to stop it so they don't assault my eardrums. Uh-huh. But on the books, technically, it's still a human life, unfortunately. Just like, you know, abortion doctor doctors. You can't kill them either, unfortunately. <laughs> Those murderers. Are, are abortion doctors in boy bands? No, but they're, they're murdering scum. We're murdering little pieces of tissue. You oh, haven't right. heard of the young that abortionists? Turns. The young abortionists was a <laughs> kind of a folk boy band from the early two thousands. Oh, they're the back they alley were... boys, is what they are. You no, know, that was a totally different thing. Coat hanger. That was boys. some former Catholic priests that formed a. Uh, this is the disco... new coat hangers on the block. <laughs> disco fusion thing. No. Yeah, so it's not a crime. I mean, it is a crime. You can't murder. Um, boy band members oh, but okay. well, you're right it is a public service just like vigilante killings you know <laughs> technically it's still against the law to like if you're charles bronson and you uh, want to go on the street and kill a bunch of guys with green mohawks who a charles kidding. bronson reference we haven't had one of those doing this yeah show. like in death wish three i mean he went out and killed some guys that deserve killing but technically the law would still prosecute him and say that's not your job that's the police you know, I think it was either Death Wish 2 or Death Wish 3 that Jimmy Page did the soundtrack for. Really? From Led Zeppelin, yes. How was he slumming like that? It was like he one of the like, first things he did after Led Zeppelin broke up. He was starting to I know, like but he's like the biggest rock star in the world. He's like, yeah, I'm going to do the shittiest movie. Well, yeah, but Charles Bronson was a big name at the time. I know, but... Even though it was Death Wish 2 or 3. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's sad. It's in the early days of popular sequels when the sequels are just, you know really yeah. bad but then death wish four though jimmy page did not do that soundtrack. I, no, he only did like i'm one sure of that them. was frank stallone did the soundtrack to that one <laughs> or, or peter lemon jello it was it was uh sylvester stallone's abortion that did the soundtrack to uh death wish four a turd he took <laughs> turd he makes stallone all right, so we, we should get back to our client. Thank you, Greg. That was another segment of Ask Greg. Um, we, we made an attempt at a ro- uh, romance advice, but I don't think that's going to go very far with the name Darling Matt, so we're going to have to shelve that till later. Oh, I like that romance advice. I'm gonna, I love delete, the idea of a guy we'll have to come up with a different title, though. Romance. Darling I Matt love... just didn't roll off the tongue very well. It, it doesn't matter. I love the fact that you have like a smaller heart than I do. And no idea of romance, giving romance advice. That was beautiful. No idea of romance. Great. That would like be me giving I, financial advice. You're, you're, should, and how how would you say that I got two women to marry me, Greg? And just blind luck. <laughs> you know, whatever. It was it was blind luck. There was, well, you know, probably there wasn't much romance involved, knowing who I am. Exactly. So, You've told me stories. What difference putting, would it make whether? You could see or not relative to luck. It doesn't what? even make any. So you say blind luck. So the luck was blind. Who gives? It, what, what does that even mean? Well, that's what Greg is saying is that I got lucky. That's how women marry me. It didn't involve any romantic, school, any romantic school, Matt. Any romantic overtures on my part. Is no, I understand mean. that, but yeah. I'm just saying how could how could being blind? Why is blind the? Oh, okay. so we're just just, just discussing the idiom blind yeah. luck. Right. Okay. So now we're just going to talk about that. So where does know. that term come from? Blind luck. Well, no, we could get back to talking about whatever Greg was talking about, but I was trying to change the subject. <laughs> yeah, I, I was going to say something like maybe too personal for Matt, but Matt's told me some stories about his courtships. It was two wives that are like, nobody does that. <laughs> You're a fucking weirdo. <laughs> what are you talking about? The thing involving the other thing? What are you, Tony Soprano? All of a sudden, well, the thing involved the other thing. Tune in again to with the guy and podcast. the thing and the guy. We you actually know what just I'm say things and speaking vague pronouns and terms that no one can figure out. Hey, big blissy, I'm talking about the thing with the guy. 
And the thing. Uh, you know, wait a minute. You mean, you mean the guy with the nose and the ears? That guy? Yeah, yeah. 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 Tony Two Times. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. That, yeah. It's Tony Two yeah. Nose. <laughs> no, he only, had, he only had one nose. He only had one nose. <laughs> that was a callback, guy. too. He was that, a fucking guy. That was a callback to Dodgy Daycare. Yeah, but, but he was a guy that knew that other fucking guy. We told him don't fucking go with the do the thing with the guy, but he went and fucking went and did any. Just don't do the thing. You don't do the thing with the guy. Fucking guy. It's always yeah, fascinating to me how we go off the rails, but man, we do. We really do go off the rails. But <laughs> it's always trick. the question is like, how is it going to happen? At what point do we lose all focus and wind up elsewhere completely? Well, it was the thing. We started. It was the thing. The thing was what started the whole other thing. It was that thing. guy, right? I think we've only done two of the kill Mary sex things. I think we didn't get very far with it. Uh, I don't think we ever determined what we were doing with the the green bean salad. Oh, uh, was the basil the? Oh yeah, it was. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, you changed. You, know, you did do. You did the green bean casserole, and we didn't get then, two more then, items. And then we Greg was pimping his like it was the Greg cooking show where he was pimping his ghetto his bowling bolognese sauce. And then you did his bourgeois bourgeois So, <laughs> so we've got green bean casserole, uh, fucking Greg's bourgeois Greg's, Greg's apocalypse. Bourgeois and I'm gonna throw in all right. Ready. So for number three, Lutefisk. Ooh. Oh, fuck it, kill it, bury it in the ground, <laughs> rape <Wow>. it. <laughs> well, well, this I, is I one of those that leads off with everybody. I think knows what the. I should try Lutefisk once. I tried it, and it's like, yes, this tastes like lye. <laughs> it's horrible. It should not be a thing. <laughs> Nobody wants to eat lye. <laughs> so I, I think it's pretty universal. Like, could I that. take a swig of your dishwashing detergent, please? Yeah, yes, that. exactly. It's so disgusting. It's like ammonia. Mmm, <laughs> ammonia. Delicious. Mm. Bleach. So that just Tasty. so that just really that so that's a kill. I think we're all in agreement that Lutefisk is killed. I want to do worse than kill it, though. I want to torture it. <laughs> I want to sodomize it. You can just exile Greg. <laughs> I don't know. You can just exile it if you don't want it near you. As opposed to, like, I want to doing, punish it, though. I want to punish Showing us your true your true nature right I now. want to punish it. It should not Is exist. Really, what, what, I mean, what are we going to gain out of punishing? I mean, I, think I want a final is solution. I want a is final enough. solution for Lutzis. <laughs> Here goes TikTok. <laughs> Sorry, Matt. Matt's we're down. To, we're down to two people on TikTok. We're triggering right Matt. But we do have three hundred nineteen likes, though. Wow, is that yeah. damn different than normal? Yeah, it is. We remember our earlier we were at twenty nine. Oh, really? So this episode we went jumped up to three nineteen. Yeah. We went from 29 to 319. I told you, cooking is a thing, Matt. He said cooking. He's always looking for validation for his ideas <laughs> from other people. It, you know what? Uh, apparently, it's happened. Greg, I got validated. Yeah, it's good. Greg, you did a great job. <laughs> Thanks. You did good. I, Thanks, Brock. I'd give you a sticker or a balloon or something. I like, feel like Brett Kavanaugh right now. I want to high five you. I really want there to be an episode sometime where it's just you two talking and that I'm not involved because I really want to see what that conversation would be if I'm well, like... Well, no one... TikTok would hear it. <laughs> you and TikTok would be like... It would be the most popular so TikTok episode Well, ever. no, I could make it work if I wasn't involved because then I could just turn up the uh, the sound and do it so they could hear it from there and put the camera on the screen. But here it's got to be like... Why can't you do that now? Because... I'll get feedback from my computer if I do that. Um, okay. If I have the microphone on and the sound coming from the uh, the laptop, it'll cause feedback. So that's why I can't do it now, Greg. You should know this. You work sound. You should know things like this. I don't work sound. I'm a KJ. <laughs> I don't know what that of... board is. I have this big board of knobs, and I don't know what they do. <laughs> it's, he blinded it's like... me with science. <laughs> it's <laughs> blind <laughs> luck. It's like those blind blinking lights right on Star there. Trek. Remember the Star Trek uh, behind Lieutenant Uhura's head? They'd be blinking lights. Those didn't do shit. Uh -huh. That's what I'm like with the soundboard. It's like, oh, dude, look at the knobs with the colors. But the knobs do something, though, Greg. Uh, sure, but I don't know what they do. But that's different from the Star Trek example you give where the things don't do anything. 
Wouldn't only have colored lights. I'm sure maybe you could press the lights if you knew Star Trek sites. It's a set, Greg. It's not if, functional. Well, I mean, if you lived a thousand years from now, you might know that, ooh, that blue light, if I press it, it'll do a oh, photon right. blaster to a Klingon warship. But a we thousand don't know years that. from now. It's like a bunch of I'm lights. sure they're still using blue lights that you push a thousand they years They did Star now. Trek, though. That's what I'm saying. It's ridiculous. Well, I mean... That was but, the Star Trek wasn't yeah. actually ahead a thousand years either. You gotta oh. give him credit though for the phone. Give him credit for you know, the what? Star Trek with the flip phone, the communicator, the like, hello. Yep, yeah. they invented the cell phone. Yeah. That's pretty visionary. I don't know if they invented it, Greg, but they came up with the idea. Yeah, they invented And I don't it. know if it came up from Star Trek or from some other science fiction story though. But you know what? I okay. God, Star Trek could I really didn't realize you were an intellectual property firm. <laughs> yeah, I you know what I think? Well, sometimes that, we do dabble in those cases. Yeah. The one thing from Star Trek that, oh my God, if it was real, this would be the best invention ever made in the history of mankind. Better than fire, better than the wheel. The thing that makes this food, fabricates food in the next generation, where you'd be like, hey, I want some, uh, some of Greg Pettit's shitty bolognese. On some Mortelli with a uh, Matt Bracci's uh, liverwurst my, my uh, display. Whatever you want, it'll make it instantly. No matter what you want to eat, at any instant, you can just go, I want to eat uh, sushi with uh, spam on it and uh, drizzle with barbecue sauce. Bam, you got it. Yeah, that would be something that would end world hunger. That's true. Holodeck. No, wouldn't it just and we're hunger would be the best thing for the quality of life. Where whatever you want to eat. But I have a feeling that all of those dishes probably all taste the same. Yeah, like right. taste like plastic or something. I think they, <laughs> they all taste like chicken. They, they'll all be yeah. molded to look like something fancy, like but yeah. the baked Alaska will actually taste like feet. Like I mean, they can they can they can, and feet. they can literally literally three D print food right now. They could make your food look like all kinds of things, but it all just tastes like no. But this is different. This is a replica. Soylent green. It actually takes the atoms and like just makes it. You could get like um, cocoa ba and just like it would make cocoa ba like delicious cocoa ba. Is, is that that that's how that's pronounced, Greg? Cocoa ba. Cocoa boo. <laughs> I have no idea. I don't know. I've never had cocoa ba. But I know it's fancy French cooking. Coco va. Coco va. How do you pronounce it? I don't pronounce it because I don't know how to pronounce that French word. Yeah, there you go. So stop giving but me it's, shit. But it's not va. I know that. It's it's Coco spelled V I N. Coco va. No, that's how French people say that. Coco va. Coco va. Coco va. I'm speaking a French thing. Coco va. They don't say Coco Vien. Coco Vien. But it's not spelled like something that would be spelled Va, Greg. No, because it's French. It's fancy. French it's is fancy. We gonna go, go to the French. Uh -huh. Would you like some bologna sandwich or white bread? One dough <laughs> white bread. It sounds better if we say it like that. Would you like some brown schweiger on Wonder Bread? Oh. <laughs> With red on y'all. So the question is, what are we? What are you going to marry? You're going to marry uh, or fornicate with green bean salad or <laughs> Greg's uh, <laughs> spaghetti sauce and noodles <laughs> with extra hamburger, so it's like chili. <laughs> Basically, yes, he just described chili as what he's describing. No, it's, it's no, not it's just it's, it's, it's chili. Not, it's it's what we what I used to cook around for the kids. I would call it chilgetti, which I'd make <laughs> chili, and instead of like, I'd, and then I'd I'd put in a bunch of fucking noodles. Chilgetti, Chil yeah, chilgetti. That's right. Or no, can, I'm just saying the consistency. Or it's like, mac a stupid. Bolognese should be that thick. It should be. You should just oh, yeah. eat it with a fork. Really I'm just curious all... where you get your um, legal um, information from regarding how thick. A bolognese should be. It's not legal. It's 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 aesthetic. Well, no, you're saying it should be that thick. Yeah, so obviously you're. It should be. Why? Why do you have that? Why do you think that's true? 
because I want to eat good food. And somebody says, hey, I'm going to make right, you but pizza. what makes you think that that's the best way to make it? Because I've tried the other ones and they suck. A just because you were raised with it one way. So you're basically yeah, just with comparing the fucking, it to your... My a brilliant chef for a father, Sicilian guy. Yeah. yeah. He, the, just because he's Sicilian and he made it a particular way that you enjoy doesn't mean it's good, Greg. It just oh, means no. that you have fond memories of it is what it means. My dad was a rich dentist on his own, but if he opened a restaurant, it would have been like five-star rated. I know, but that's your nostalgia talking. It would have been that, Michelin guy. That's no, your love not. for your father no, talking. It's not. Right? It's it is not. totally. I you know, I, I think you just I'm don't kidding. have a, you don't have I'm taste kidding. buds where you can actually make these particular statements, Greg. No, I don't have the culinary skills to make these, or or the foods. taste buds really to to know what's better. What I know it's because you smoke yeah. too much; it's destroyed your taste buds. You don't know. No, the I'm saying, but I I didn't smoke when I was twelve, and uh-huh. I knew that even when I was twelve and fifteen. And even I didn't smoke until I was 30, uh-huh. where I was just like, oh, my God, Italian food is bad? That's not Italian food. That's not what my dad made. Well, it's your dad makes like, Sicilian food. He doesn't make Italian food. That's the difference. No, Italian is it's the same thing, but Sicilians are better at Bolognese than, than the boot. Right. What about the, the people boot. who live in Bolognese? Do they make it better than the Sicilians? No. In Bologna? Bologna... Peanut butter and bologna sandwiches also. All right, we'll just do three different sandwiches real quick to wrap up the show. So we name a sandwich. Just... Name a sandwich, Greg. Uh, a Philly cheesesteak. Okay. Brendan, sandwich. Peanut butter, peanut butter and bologna. All right, I'm going to go for egg salad. Well, I love egg salad. I'll go first. Okay. Um, I'm going to... Kill the bologna and peanut butter. Uh-huh. I'm going to uh, choice. I'm going to fuck the Philly's cheesesteak, and I'm going to marry the egg salad. Yes, because egg salad's got staying power. <laughs> Especially, as, yeah, but as, so does Brendan. As you become an old man, you're going to love egg salad. That's like no, an old man. That's why. I'm, that's why. Like, when you're at the senior citizen home, you're going to be like egg salad, please. I'm ninety. It's, it's yummy when you're a kid. It's yummy until you're really old. It's eggs. It's easy. It's simple. It's good you can mash it up. I can nothing to chew. It's you great. can actually put brown schweiger on it. You could if you wanted to. Yeah. But I'm a Philly, sure. but a, a good Philly cheesesteak with all that gooey cheese. Oh, oh. right. The my that, dick that, would that. fit so good in that. Oh, oh my god, perfect. It's perfect. all kind of warm. No, no, no. Gooey. It's the choice is obvious. I like how you yeah. keep using the word gooey. Someone has gooey. just asked, uh, do you give mustache rides to me on TikTok? Yes. You? Yeah, absolutely. Much- Only for like nickel? really tiny horsemen. I, I will toss your salad for a good review on <laughs> Facebook. Toss or your egg you, salad. YouTube. Like <laughs> and subscribe. But how much are your mustache rides, Matt? What do you charge? Uh, well, it would be like whatever the um, coins oh, are used rates? by <laughs> tiny little horsemen. I would do it on. I would. I would have to shave basis. it off so they could ride it, though. But the weirdest thing is, is I was a little boy. Mustache rides were a nickel, five cents, uh-huh. and then they still are. I still see the T-shirts. Well, obviously, it's inflation proof. Mustache. I know it's bizarre. Like milk. When I was a little boy, you could buy a gallon of milk for three tuppence. And now, a threepence. Three threepence. Yeah. Is is that similar to a chub? How many threepence <laughs> yes. in a chub? That's what I need you, to know. You can buy a five threepences per chub for five but, shekels. But a mustache rides was a nickel when I was a boy, and it's still a nickel. I still see the T-shirts. Mustache rides, five cents. So whenever you have the question asked, ask gas or gas. No one rides for free. What is the cost of those three items? It's, it depends on if you have enough gas, gas, or grass to offer. I've always wondered that. First time I saw that when I was like a teenager, I was like, ask gas or grass, no one rides for free. I'm like, why Why do they want lawn? <laughs> no, I guess basically you got to put up um, your ass, though. It doesn't even say fucking. It's like, no anal sex. They just want you to fart in their face. Yeah, if you get a ride for someone, if you hitchhike and get a yeah. ride, 
if you don't have gas money, if you uh -huh. don't have grass money, you gotta just do anal with the person who gave you a ride. Well, Which, that's a good point to stop at in this conversation. No, but I've heard oh, that was geez. a thing. When I you just were like, okay, the 50s, guys are... 60s, when you were a hitchhiker in the 50s and 60s, truckers would pick you up if you were a dude. Yeah, yeah that was a thing. You might I got I got picked up by a guy, not a oh yes, truck. Brendan has a story like this in the fifties. Yeah, I got picked up by a truck. No, not, not in the fifties, but no, in the mid eighties. Yes, it was a thing. Truckers are lonely. But why, why, why don't you let do. Brendan finish telling the story, Greg? But but he wasn't a trucker, though. I'm saying he was just a guy in a truck. He wasn't like oh. a semi trucker or something. Yeah, I couldn't have jumped out of a probably a semi truck as well as I could have a, a whatever the whatever the brand of Ford he was driving at the time. How old were you then when this occurred? Uh, I was 16. Oh, scary. I was 16. I uh, I told my mom she was sitting there smoking a cigarette and reading Louis L'Amour or some other garbage. So what we're sure it wasn't Boy's some, Life she was reading? That's something. But anyway, I said, I'm leaving. And she's like, where are you going? I said, San Francisco. <laughs> and she's like, okay, funny. I'll see you when you get back. I'm like, okay. <laughs> and I hitchhiked to San Francisco. Oh. Did she ever see you when you got back? I called her uh, shortly after the run-in with the guy outside of just outside of Crescent, just on the other side of Crescent City, California. So he picked me up in Oregon. I actually uh, stayed in a hotel room in Crescent City, California. Once yeah, I don't know what it's like now, but back then it was it was all just scary. Anyway, I did Probably call about her. The same. Yeah, yeah, I called her and she's like, "Where are you?" And this is you know payphone shit, and I'm like. Where you you were actually like turning the <laughs> ringing of hey all ships at sea mother mother it's me I'm in the war I want to hear I want to talk to Barney seven one three I called her and she was really pissed at me and she was when are you coming home I said when I get back from San Francisco anyway okay and how was San Francisco San Francisco was great uh, I saw Metallica in this. Like literally, like a VFW hall. Wait, Metallica uh, was a band then. What year was this again? Yeah, it's like early eighty, mid eighties. Oh yeah, yeah. They, that's right. They, they were starting were to get like popular, like about eighty three, I guess. Yeah, yeah. They started. They were they were starting coming out. They were out of San Francisco, and uh, but they weren't like the number one band in America in the mid eighties. No, like, at that time, well, the biggest I, think, I guess the the biggest hair band at the time was like Def Leppard. Yeah, which is a yeah. big animal. Yeah, no, exactly. So I Leopard, was skateboarding Metallica. around with a bunch of punk rock kids and they're like, you got to go see these dirt rockers. They're going to be big. And I'm like, oh, okay. I know. I, I refused to listen to them because I hated their name. Really? Yeah, I just thought Metallica was just a stupid freaking name. And I'm like, you know what? I don't need to listen to these guys. So I never listened. But you to them. lost out. Wow, I was going to say, you missed some really good music, unfortunately. Yeah. You know, I, I caught up to it years later. But, you know, yeah. for many years there, I was just like, no, I'm not going to listen to you. And I was kind of phasing out of my heavy metal years anyway at that stage. So, Yeah, because, I mean, there isn't there isn't a band that's got a better name than, like, Yes or Blue Oyster Cult. <laughs> well, no, well <laughs> I mean, I mean, Yes came later. But Blue Oyster or Cult, Jeff really, <laughs> there's not much there's not a much better uh, group name than Blue Oyster Cult, really. That's I could think. I don't know. I mean, isn't one cool of the more name. creative names for bands? Did you ever find out, Matt? What's the oyster? Why did they make that? I never looked it up. I just thought it was kind you of never fun. Looked it up? No, I never did. Yeah, it sounds so cool, but when you think about blue oyster, it's like I don't know, like and there's a cult red, around it. Red, red muscle. Maybe it's like a sexual reference. I don't yeah. know. There, there are types of oysters that are called blue points. There are Blue Point oysters. They're up in the so Northwest. Blue Point si Siamese cats too. Uh, maybe they're not in the North. They're they're either up in the Northwest or they're out, in, you know, Baltimore area. All right. So, Greg, um, Metallica, Def Leppard, or Blue Oyster Cult? Which ones? What was the third one? Uh, Blue Oyster, Blue Oyster Cult. Cult. Def Leppard oh, or Metallica? Who are you going to fornicate? Okay, gonna... I definitely want to marry Blue Oyster Cult. Oh, okay. That's a band that I could live with for the rest of my life. They got, <laughs> you know, it's not just like one note. It's, not, it's like, oh yeah, they got like their, I mean, Blues Your Cult had a fucking 50s song, True Confessions on Agents of Fortune. Yeah, they were all over the place. Uh -huh. I mean, 
Desert Island Disc shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I could listen to all their shit. Yeah. Um, Metallica definitely fuck. Because they were hot. <laughs> and Def Leppard, yeah, I could easily kill. I think I liked, I kind of like Photograph. Like, when I saw it on TV, I was like, this is a decent top 40 song. But other than that, I could give two shits about Def Leppard. Hmm. Yeah, so okay. kill them. Gotcha. Brandon? I would, um, I think I would marry Metallica. Um, Lars? specifically maybe um kill boy i think i'd have to kill def leopard because there's no way i could kill blue oyster cult so uh i guess i would uh i would uh fuck blue oyster cult <laughs> you know they're right. just, they're, yeah they're, 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 not just... My, they're not my thing they're not it's like one of those things they're not my not my not my thing but but it's a kink, and I can totally get into it for a little while, and then go, okay, I've had enough. And then you would toss them aside like a little whore. I would ghost the shit out of Blue Oyster Cult. I was just like, don't even, don't even try to call me, fucking. It's kind of like what they did with their career. They kind of ghosted the rest of the world. Yeah, that's true. They put out a couple of albums, and then I was like, where they go? But then you know, the guys from Happy Hour News team, they have like a recent song of Blue Oyster Cult that they use for their Florida Man segment because it's called Florida Man. Oh, yeah, that's what right. All right, well, what was the name Wait, of the no, client that, again? What? That, no, you didn't do yours. Oh, shit. Um, all right, so just to change things up, marry Def Leppard, kill Metallica, sex with Blister Cult. You didn't even right. believe that. You just said that to be different. Well, you know, that's usually how I apply things in my life anyway, Greg. Well, yeah. two two out of three were different. Well, it's okay. I guess I should have mixed up the other two, but no, no, I kind of want to kill Metallica anyway. So, well, I know you would want to marry. Blue. Mathematically, it doesn't totally work out. You're going to probably end up agreeing. I, I kind of us. go based upon how many songs of each band I do at karaoke. So I do more songs of Blue Oyster Cult than I do of Def Leppard, but I do more songs really? of Def Leppard than I do of Metallica at karaoke. So that's kind of how that I'm gauge. That's my gauge, Greg. That's that's got to be a Portland thing. I am sure that if I went to a karaoke bar, Def Leppard would be the number one. No, so. it's hard. That's the thing. Karaoke, if the song's hard to do. No, I'm yes. saying that I'm not doing it based upon how hard the song is. I'm saying how many ones that I do. No, I'm saying I'm saying though, Brendan. Yeah, but but but, but he's saying right. that if the if Def the song Leopard is hard, huge hits. Yeah, but, but see, nobody was. There's bands like Mariah Carey. You know. I even heard Mariah Carey once something like KJ. Even though she had more top 40 hits than a lot of people, she's hard to sing. So people are like, oh, I love Mariah Carey. We don't, but other people do. Right. So but you never hear it at karaoke because it's hard oh. to do. No, you know, well, I didn't want to get into like those issues regarding karaoke. I was just giving my rationale. Oh, I know. I was, and I was giving another rationale. I know. It's just that, you know, Brenda doesn't like it when we talk about karaoke. Oh, I don't give a shit. I was going to say that that makes total sense. But in Florida, uh, that little, you know, person on your shoulder that says, hey, don't try to sing that song. You're going to sound like an idiot. He doesn't exist. <laughs> Meth, oh. <laughs> Meth will drive him away. So they'll go out and sing fucking, you know, the police. So the guy right in the crocodile into the bar would be like, I can, I can totally oh, do this. The That's because the crocodile will be part of the duet. <laughs> they have high pitch voice crocodiles. They have a very high. <laughs> they tender. do make they make a bird like chirping noise when they're children to call oh. their mother. Really interesting. Yeah. Could okay. you could you do that for us? <laughs> it's sort of like uh, like this. It's like uh, that's adorable. I yeah, it's kind of cute. I think we just have our opening sequence for the, the Doop. podcast when I edit it Doop. now. Doop. Yeah. I, I All right. I didn't, well, I didn't realize I did Gator, but I do. Uh, apparently, you do Gator. Well, with, this has been another episode of the Law Offices of Cool Skull and Bicker with our special edition of. <laughs> what the hell is the name of the client again? Kill, okay. Mary, fornicate your lunch. Right. Kill, Mary, or fornicate or pork your lunch. I.e. cooking. Or cooking. Or Greg. cooking Greg's amazing spaghetti. Bolognese. Spaghetti. It's actually, he calls meat. it Bolognese so that he can have sex with his own sauce. 
I would if it was legal. Okay. I, I, I I got that like the third time we told us about it. <laughs> All right, this has been the Law Offices of Quibbles, Weldon Vicker. We are now shutting down the live streams. Goodbye, live streams. Thank you for 538 likes on TikTok. Wow. It ended with 538 Whew. likes on TikTok. I told you this would be our best episode. Uh, enough ever. with the I told, I told you. you whatever. I told That's you. That's why girls don't stay with you, Greg. It's the this I told you. This is our best thing. episode ever. <laughs> ever. That's the best episode we've ever done. This episode ever. You said that about the last episode. Yeah, that was good. Every episode is the best ever. It's always getting a little bit better every time. That was, the best. That was a good episode, though. Your consultation with the law offices of Quiddle, Squabble, and Picker has ended. You may pay your retainer at www.qsblah.org. Please exit to the right of the water cooler and grab a candy from the front desk. We hope to see you again soon, but you need to leave now. I said leave. Why don't they ever listen? Get out! Get out!